knitting essentials, tools you'll need before you start knitting. So if you're a beginner, watch this. Hello everybody, my name is Bash Harry and this is the Harry Knit. I hope you're doing well, I hope you're feeling well, and if you want to know about knitting, please hit the subscribe button. That'll be awesome. I have been knitting for 10 years now, which feels like a long time, but not really, because I've been doing it on and off. And there are a lot of things that I wish I knew when I was first starting out because 10 years ago, YouTube wasn't what it was now. Knitting wasn't what it was now. And so I had to learn a lot through trial and error. It can be very overwhelming, especially when you're starting out a new hobby, but this is where this video comes along. I want to show you guys what needles you might need, some tools, some yarn that you should have that you could probably find in the store for very cheap. If you're starting out or if you're a beginner, please keep on watching. I hope to provide some really, really helpful tips. And if you're a more advanced intermediate knitter or you've been knitting for a while, if I left something out that you think is really important, feel free to leave it in the comments down below because I need to know as well. I think I'm missing something, surely, so please leave it in the comments. Let's start a discussion on what we really need to get into knitting. That's about it. Let's get started. So I'm going to break this video down to the main things, necessities, and not necessary, but definitely recommended. So the first thing, of course, that we're going to talk about is your knitting needles. I always thought it was going to be straight needles. That's what I saw on all the movies, all the TV shows, all the projects they were using, they were using straight needles. But now that we have grown in the age of the internet, I learned a thing or two about circular needles. So which one's better, straight needles or circular needles? Honest answer, circular needles all the way. Circular needles are so much better for your wrists. They don't carry all that heavy weight and you can make so many cool items like hats and clothes. And even if you want to do flat projects, you can use circular needles. If you're a beginner, I would recommend going for something like a 40 centimeter or a 60 centimeter if you're making some small basics like hats or scarves. The ones that I got were from my local yarn store, very cheap circular needles, but now I use the Knit Pro interchangeable needles. I don't have a set I buy when I need the needles, so I just build my collection slowly. It's not about buying the needles for that specific yarn or that specific project. It's about accommodating yourself. What are the needles that you have in your collection and what you can make out of them and the yarn that you have. I think as a beginner, you want to focus on making easy projects that you know you can do with the limited amount of tools that you have. Start slow, take it easy. The collection that I built was in a span of 10 years and it is nowhere near done. And I'm completely fine with that. I think it is something that we all should start doing more mindfully and slowly, even if I have to think more mindfully more often. For beginners, I would recommend needles that are somewhere around the four to five to six millimeter range. That seems to be the sweet spot because it's not too big, not too small. A lot of DK Aran worsted weight projects use those needles and they aren't too heavy and I think they're a bit more easier to find in your local yarn store. There are also different types of knitting needles like bamboo or metal or wood. I'm sure there's a nickel somewhere, but honestly, I can't give you a lot of recommendations for it. I use what I can and what I have. Uh, I'm not good at choosing. It is purely up to you. I know some people who love working with bamboo because it's sturdy. And I know people that don't like working with bamboo because it is sturdy, it keeps your stitches there and it's not loose enough for that little momentum. So it is just playing around and figuring out what you want, what, what you want. It's figuring out what you like and that only goes with trial and error. I can only recommend that you go to the four to five, six millimeter knitting needles and for them to be circular around 40 centimeters to 60 centimeters. Once you get the hang of it, then you can move on to bigger projects that require bigger or smaller needles. Next up in our main thing is obviously 
the yarn. I've got a lot of thoughts on yarn, so we're gonna break it down. The first thing I wanna say is such a huge misconception, and that is acrylic. I know that we low-key dislike acrylic, and for many good reasons. It is plastic, it doesn't keep the warmth in, it's very hot, um, scratchy, but to be honest, if you are a beginner, acrylic is your friend. It is the cheapest, it is the most effective, and I think it does get a bad rep, honestly. There are so many good acrylic brands in the market. For example, Caron Simply Soft, I've used it to make clothes that look great and feel very, very soft. Especially as a beginner, I don't think you're making projects like tops that you're wearing, but you're making hats or coasters that don't necessarily need to be warm. They're accessories. So acrylic is a good way to start and you can go to your local craft store. In terms of yarn weight, which is also very important when it comes to knitting and your knitting knowledge, I honestly didn't know about yarn weight till like two years ago. I know, very, very embarrassing. I am embarrassed for myself, but it was something that I didn't realize was important to know the difference between, you know, the fingering or Aran or DK or bulky. This was something that I didn't really look for and I didn't really know until now. So it's important to know that when you're following a pattern is to choose the correct yarn weight. So I personally, as a knitter, I go for fingering or DK, but for beginners, I would actually recommend going for a heavier weight yarn like Aran or Worsted because even bulky yarn, to be honest, because it gives a very defined stitch and that's great for beginners. So you can see if you made a mistake or you could see how the knitting looks. For me personally, as I said, I go for DK or fingering but that's a lot of work and a lot of stitches. Also one thing that I wish I knew as a beginner when it came to yarn is to think about the weather. I live in a hot climate, so when I was a kid, when I was starting out, I thought I would never be able to knit garments because it would have been too hot. But no, 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 absolutely not true. When you want to think about making clothes as a beginner, I think we, think we can only make sweaters or cardigans with wool, but that's not true. If it's hot or summery where you are or you want to make garments for the summer, you want to go for a lighter yarn like cotton, viscose, linen, or even bamboo and silk. I've actually worked with merino for like our weather and it's been fine. It's been great actually. So those are the yarns I would recommend if you are someone who wants to start knitting in the summer as well. But of course, if you want to make sweaters, you want to focus on going for wool, alpaca. That's all I know about knitting in the winter months. I don't wear, I don't, I, we don't have winter here, so I wouldn't know. But of course, wool is always the go-to. That's all I really want to talk about when it comes to the main things like your knitting needles and your yarn. Uh, those two obviously are the most important part of your project, but of course there are more things to go. We're going to talk about the necessities, I would say, especially when they come up and you're making a project. So what do you need really? Well, the first thing I think is very obvious, and I always keep it in a pouch like this, are your scissors. Sorry about the clanking. Your scissors. I keep losing scissors. I always lose my scissors. I always lose like the small notions and markers and things. So I always just keep them in a bag like these. Let's talk about it later. Scissors are so important for your knitting, especially when you have to cut the yarn or you need to cut more stuff. <laughs> Honestly, any types of scissors will work. I go for the small ones because I want them to fit in my knitting bag if I'm going out. Another thing that I think is a necessity are stitch markers. I keep them in a little box like this. So they look a little bit like this. They come in varying sizes, so they fit any project that you have. And when I was a broke student, who honestly didn't know anything about stitch markers. I used rubber bands and or like yarn leftover, like scrap yarn that I tied in a circle and I just put it in. That's a tip. 
if you don't have the money for stitch markers, but I'll be honest, stitch markers are so much better. There are fancy ones on the market. I have one or two that I got uh, from Kat and they're so cute, but honestly, you just need basic stitch markers. Maybe a few in bigger sizes, maybe some smaller ones for smaller needles. I keep mine very basic and I keep them color coded. I think they sell for a pack for five or six dollars in your local yarn store. So it's all about just accommodating with what you have. And if you want to get those prettier stitch markers, go ahead. Feel free to. Honestly, I'm not stopping you. They're so cute. But for me personally, I would just prefer sticking to the basics. Another thing that I would consider a necessity is a darning needle. So these comes in various sizes as well. I'll pop one up for you. So something like this is what I would use for a bigger project. This is a darning needle, but for smaller projects, like if I'm making a fingering weight top, I would go for something much thinner, like, like this. So you can see that it varies in thickness and sizes depending on the yarn that you are working with. I would say a small one and a big one would be good. Uh, it does come in a pack of varying sizes. I got mine for, I think, $1.50. If you were a broke kid like me, you could use a bobby pin. <laughs> a freaking bobby pin. I was a, I was a bad knitter. I was, I was not good at all of this. <laughs> yeah, I lost my needles so often I would just end up using a bobby pin to like weave in all the ends. Not smart, but crafty. And of course, one thing that I would consider a necessity, especially if you are doing bigger projects, is a ruler. I have a ruler that I got from Michaels back in 2014, I would say, so a good eight years. And I got this one specifically for knitting. On one side, it's got inches. The other side is centimeters. And I absolutely adore this thing. It is the perfect size. It is about six, 15, six inches, 15 centimeters, and it has a gauge count right here. And obviously the little holes for my needles, just in case I need to remember what size it is. And also it has a razor. It has a razor to cut yarn. So it's like a three, four in one or whatever. Amazing. Obviously you can just use a regular needle in the future if you do want to get something like a knitting ruler get this one. I'll leave a link down below if I can find it. Okay, we've talked about things I would consider a necessity, but let's talk about things that aren't quite a necessity, but I definitely would recommend. And the first thing is a measuring tape. So I have two measuring tapes. I have one that's a fabric like this, and another one that is a retractable one that I actually stole from my partner. So thank you very much. They're very important when you are measuring your projects full length or width that your ruler can't. Obviously, if I'm gonna be knitting clothes up, I wouldn't be able to get the full exact measurement of just this. I'd have to use a measuring tool. I think these are pretty cheap. They're only maybe $2, if not less. But if you can find one, I would say keep it in your bag at all times. Another thing that I would recommend, which has saved me so much time and saved my knitting projects all the time are needle caps. My friends think they look weird, but, and they do, but it's these like little stubby things and they are lifesavers. They come in a pack and I always use them. I use them all the time on my whips when I'm not working on them so I can protect my stitches. There are so many times when I would knit a project, leave it like on my bed or on my table not use these and then I end up finding that they're loose or they start like coming off. And that's just so terrifying. That is a knitter's biggest nightmare. Well, I think it is. My other nightmare is that my cat eats my yarn. Please keep in mind, needle caps are so, so, so valuable and cheap too. Another thing I would recommend getting if you are interested and you're buying yarn is a ball winder. This is my little ball winder. I also got it at Michael's seven years ago. I don't know what the brand is. It's been years. 
but she is great. She is lovely. She is beautiful. I have brought her when I was in the UK. I brought her and I still use her to this day when I'm winding up skeins. You don't have to have her. Before I had her, I was just winding it up with my hands and that was fine. It was very soothing for me. Uh, but, you know, once you get that investment and start using a ball winder, it does help create cakes for your knitting and it is very beneficial. Another thing that we we'll recommend, and I mentioned it earlier, but I feel like it needs to be said, is getting yourself containers. So I have this basic sewing case and I have a little pouch that my mom made. Sorry for the clanking. These are lifesavers. They keep everything that I need in this toolbox in case I misplace it. So I keep my stitch markers, some pins, a bit of scrap yarn, and of course my interchangeable needles, little blockers, I think it's called. So they keep everything there and I know where to find it. I was somebody who used to misplace my little stitch markers everywhere, but now I can just put them in one place and not worry about it. So yeah, that is about it. That's all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. And of course, if you think I've missed something, feel free to leave it down in the comments. I would love to know. In fact, I'd love to get some more stuff, especially what you consider a necessity. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're a beginner and you're starting out your knitting journey, feel free to follow along. I have some more beginner friendly videos coming right up so stay tuned for that but i shall see you soon i shall see you next week and i hope you have a lovely day my name is badge harry this is the harry knit i'll see you later bye